Hey YouTube, thanks for joining in again. Hey boys and girls, whoever wants to build a 72 by 2 inch belt grinder. A lot of cool stories about how easy it is to build them. It's not. Um, I'm going to talk today about the bearings. Everybody says, well, just you know, line up your bearings, uh, your bearings and you're in business, you're good. Okay, you're not good. My experience is, I got two-piece top quality solid bass, three-quarter inch pillow block bearing and it comes uh, to a total of $16.39. Alright, now we assume, I do it as quick as and painless as possible, we assume that this is not really mounted on, it just needs the, the key in just to keep it simple. We assume that this is on already on your motor, then the pulley on here is on already, and everything is lined up with the belt. This is what we assume from this point on, and everybody says just keep it straight. Okay, good. Now here's straight. This straight. And what I discovered is that if I put my spare on, that this is it touches here and there's maybe an eighth space if it is an eighth. But from this pulley to that pulley, which I just took off, it's parallel. But if I just slide it over, now it touches here. It's about a quarter space here, which means our high quality precision brass pillow block bearings are actually not pressed in square to the housing. Neither is this one, nor is this one. So what we do is, we just put our shaft through this block, this block, keep it the same height with the same spacers, put our pulley on, line it up and just screw it down. What I feel is like half inch bolts all the way through, all the way to the bottom. And I bolted them down. And I have actually 9 16 holes in the bottom of the base, which is 1 16 bigger here. And of course, on the other side, this gives me some wiggle room to adjust it. So this bearing was loose all the time, put your pulley on, put the pulley on, put the belt on, and then you can hold it here and actually adjust back and forth to make that pulley line up. Now, this is a different story. This is where you adjust everything else. This, you want to know where your drive wheel has to be on your sander. You can adjust it later, and this is not really what we're talking about right now. What I want to talk about is right now, how easy does the shaft has to move? Well, I think it has to move as easy as possible. If you have a hard time moving it back and forth, to turning it, moving it back and forth, the more stress you put on the bearings, both sides of the bearings, this puts stress on the bearings already. This will put stress on once the drive wheel is on and the belt is on. This will put additional stress on. So if this is hard to turn, something is wrong. So I adjusted it to do this. Okay, watch. I might be sure you show so I can just push it with my finger. It's going to keep sliding. Okay, I can just go here, there. Watch. This is what you want. It's really easy. The 
this is how it should go. Now, as we noticed, this is my square edge before, and this is how it runs off. Here. So this you adjust to your motor, and this you just adjust. That's right. This will be in an angle to your motor anyway. And then your station, your grinder station, you will adjust to your drive wheel. So your, your grinding station will be a little bit like this, a little bit like that. It will probably not be 100% out straight in an angle from this drive wheel on. So what I noticed is also I have those um, 9 16 inches on the bottom on both sides. So I have some wiggle room here. But the most important part is actually keeping these two um, bearings together or apart. In my case, they had to be together more. So I put that rod in between. They're in the lower holes. They couldn't be in the upper holes because they would interfere with the drive wheel and they would interfere on this side with the pulley. I would rather have him on the top, but he couldn't be there. So I need a lot more pressure on the bottom just to keep everything together on the top. And the way I found out about that is by putting just a clamp on. Really easy to figure it out. Put a clamp on, on the top, tighten the clamp, and see how this slides back and forth. And then adjust, adjust that screw there. It's not really a screw, it's just a, like a, a threaded rod, so I can cut any length I want. And I have actually two nuts on each side, which I actually counterclockwise tighten to each other. One goes this way. The other one I tighten that way with two wrenches, so th these two are tightened to each other so they won't come loose anymore. And the washer, of course, for more pressure surface. And then the other one also, you tighten it with the inside screw and then use this one, tighten it to the inside screw so they won't come loose anymore and also a washer. And this is how I achieved that. Now it's really going really very easy. So I know that it's not going to wear my bearing soon. It, it's, so, it's so smooth, there's not even any grease in yet. Grease nibbles, you will notice that actually you can hand unscrew them or hand tighten them. Obviously, you can't screw them very, very tight because you're going to take off the plastic ring holds the cover, but they don't have to be tight. All they have to do is push the grease in from here into the bearing and then of course you cover it. And they're both the same. See, it's not it's not much to it. If you want them really tight I would just take them, take them off, take this off, put them back in. Tighten it. This off here. Just keep keep the cap. Now remember, this is going to be a sander or a metal sander, metal shaver even. That creates a lot, a lot of metal shavings in a short time. So you really want everything that is um, vulnerable to these little shavings, like close that. And, um, this is it. This is what I found. I hope it helps. I really like it this way. It takes a, it takes some effort. Yeah, it's not it's not that easy. You gotta figure out how much of everything is, and you gotta play around. Maybe you have to go apart and put your two screws, the two screws that you actually put against each other, put them on the inside. If you keep your base high enough. You might even be able to keep the rod higher up, to need less pressure, because of course they, they, 
the lever, you got more leverage on the top than on the bottom, and then your, your drive wheel would actually fit without interfering with those nuts. I had them up here. You can imagine that. If your drive wheel is up here, and the screw would be down there, it's not going to work. So I need, I'd put them down here, but I need more pressure. And by the way, it's a two-horse motor, and uh, this is why I use half-inch bolts, because I figure that two horses won't stop for me or you. So, I want to be safe. I really go with half-inch, uh, yeah, half-inch bolts. Yeah, and this is it. Any questions and comments? Maybe you like even. I hope that helps, and you know, now you know how to adjust your bearings a little bit better. They might not be uh, everything or 100%, but this is what I found. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.